Moderna and the COVID vaccine could take a big step uh, towards approval today. We've been waiting for this uh, when an advisory, FDA advisory uh, committee meets. And Meg Terrell joins us now with a look at what to expect. I just can't imagine, I, you know, I hate consensus, Meg, because it's always wrong, but I can't imagine any major uh, problems at this point. And we're all expecting this to go pretty well today, I think. We are. And, you know, that that issue last week that caused a few of the panel members to vote no on the Pfizer vaccine won't exist here with the Moderna vaccine. That was the age for the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. It started at age 16 for the emergency use authorization. With Moderna's, it's age 18. So that is just off the table. So uh, this meeting starts today at 9 a.m. There's going to be presentations from the FDA. There'll be a presentation from Moderna. There will be an open public hearing in the middle of the day. And then between 3.10 and 5.15, there's the committee discussion and the voting. And so if it goes the same as it went last week, we could hear about this vote just a little bit after 5 p.m. And guys, this comes, of course, after we saw those documents on Tuesday from the FDA showing how it's thinking about this vaccine. Uh, And if they vote yesterday, which is expected, the FDA could grant the emergency use authorization as soon as tomorrow or Saturday, and that would trigger the shipment of six million doses next week to more than 3,000 locations, which would be joining Pfizer's vaccine making its way across the country. Now, some of the things I'm going to be listening for today are uh, anything about allergic reactions. Of course, with Moderna's vaccine and with Pfizer's in the trial, we didn't see any of these things, but we're starting to hear about them in very rare cases uh, with the Pfizer vaccine as it rolls out, guys. And as this one joins Pfizer on the market, I talked with Dr. Anthony Fauci yesterday as part of our Healthy Returns series about when we'll all be able to get access to a vaccine if we want one. Here's what he said. If you look at the cadence of the vaccinations in different priority groups, we hope that by the time we get to March, early April, we will have gotten through the group so that anybody who wants a vaccine can get a vaccine. So, guys, we're talking March, early April for everybody who's not in one of those top priority groups to be getting access. And Dr. Fauci was saying maybe late summer, early fall, if enough people get vaccinated, we might be starting to talk about getting back to normal. Joe? Yeah, Meg, the the Bell's palsy. I looked at that. Two in the two in the people that got the vaccine, one in the in the placebo. So that says to me that makes no sense, does it? So that probably is not not going to be an issue either, because that would be a bad uh, side effect, obviously, in an, in an autoimmune situation, I think, which would raise, you know, raise some questions, maybe. But uh, th- is that likely to be discussed as well? It probably will. I mean, there, I think it actually might have been two cases of Bell's palsy. And, and when I first was looking at the documents, I thought it read two. And so my my graphics that morning might have said two. I think there were three in the vaccine arm and one in the placebo arm for Moderna. And then with Pfizer, I, I believe there were four cases of Bell's palsy. And I think they were all from the vaccine. But at the same time, you know, there is just a, an underlying rate of Bell's palsy in the population. Uh, and so they don't know that it's caused by the vaccine. And so it is something they're watching and some they will discuss and, and figure out how to monitor for, but um, not something I'm hearing from any experts they think is a major concern. And then we heard about President Macron. When, whenever I hear a, a well-known person, mm-hmm. now these people are out and about, they're, they're, they're leaders, but, you know, it, there is a fatigue, there's a sort of a, you know, we've been, you know, the precautions we've been taking have, are dragging on now for a long time. And God, I just, you know, can't help the feeling that God, it just seems like your number could be up eventually. All these people get it and you, and you can't let your guard down. You, you got to try and make it to March or April. I don't want this thing. And it just it's weird. So many, uh, you know, we hear so many well-known people. It finally catches up with with them. But there's no reason to think that if you if you mask up and if you, you know, avoid, uh, you know, any type of contact like that. But, you know, there is fatigue, Meg. There sure is, Joe. And I mean, this is a real tricky virus. I mean, we've learned more about it uh, over the months, you know, and if you're in a non-ventilated area, um, the idea that there could be aerosols that stick around even after a person has left. I mean, it's not like measles where it sticks around forever, but, you know, so it's tricky. And, you know, so these things do happen. But, um, you know, even as we do get vaccinated, until we have more data on whether these vaccines prevent infection. And, you know, we got some early signs that the Moderna vaccine 
likely does to some extent, and probably the Pfizer one will too. We just don't have those data yet. We will have to keep wearing masks and socially distancing uh, for some part of next year, even after we each get our own shots. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.